Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to the class. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. In today's class, let's learn to build a digital clock application with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. A lot of you have been asking for this, and finally today I am going to teach you how to build this clock application from scratch. And by the end of this class, you will have a fully functional digital clock on your computer. And in the process of building this amazing project, you will have learned about how to work with the date object, how to get hour, minute, and second from the date object, and you will also learn about how to execute a function every second so let us jump into the html editor and start writing the code first up i will create a div and i will give it a class name of uh, clock so let me give it a class name of clock and then i will close this div and inside of this div i will create three span with the id of hour minute and second so span id of hour and then the span with the id of minute so span id of minute and then i will close this span and then span with the id of second Students, this is a very simple HTML code. We are creating a division with the class name of clock. And inside of this division, we have three span. One with the ID of hour, which will display the hour. And one with the ID of minute, which will display the minute. And one with the ID of second, which will display the second. Now, let us jump into the CSS editor and start styling our application. So first off, I will style my body and I will set the background color of my body to black. And we know that the hex code of black is 000 and 000 like that. And then we will set the text color to a green color. So C-O-L-O-R to green color. And the green hex code that I want to use is 71 f 5 1 b if you want to use a different color then feel free to do so now let's just test our css by putting some dummy value over here so i will put 11 here and then column and in the minute i will put uh, 14 and then the column and in the second span i will put 20 or 12 and you can see that our code is working the text color of this span is green. Now let's just style our clock so that this looks a lot better. So I will go down here and then I will type dot clock to style my clock. First up I will set the height of this clock to 100% and then I will set the padding top to 100 pixel. And then I will set the text align to center so text align to center and now you will see that our text is in the center so now let's just increase the font size so font size and i will set the font size to 60 pixel and there is a font a lot better and a lot bigger and now let us set the font family and for the font family I want to use a Google font named Orbitron so I will go to fonts.google.com and then I will search for Orbitron so O R B I and this is the font that I want to use so I will click on it and here you can select any style you want but I'll be choosing this one so I will click on select this style and then I will click on embed because I want to embed this font into our clock application. So I will click on this uh, embed over here and then I will click on this import because I want to use the CSS import functionality to import this font into our application. So I will copy this code 
in between the style tag so I will just copy it and then I will go back to my project and then I will go to the top of my CSS editor and I will paste this code so let me just paste it over here and now I can use this font family called Orbitron so I will say font dash family and I will set this font family to Orbitron now this looks amazing if you want to use any other font then feel free to do so Google fonts have hundreds and thousands of font that you can use but I really like this font and that's why I am using it now that the design of this application is ready let's just write the JavaScript code which will update the time over here so I will go to the JavaScript editor and I will create a new function called update time so update time and this update time will actually update the time okay and inside the update time function I will create a new date object and this date object will be called current time so current time is equal to new date object and students this date object lets us work with the date and time in JavaScript it is an inbuilt object which lets us work with date and time in JavaScript so if you are working on any project where you need to get the current time or current date then make sure that you use this date object because it is inbuilt and it is really powerful now you can see that we have the current time and this current time objects holds the current date and time but we don't want the date we only want the current time we want the hour we want the minute and we want the second so we will get we will fetch the current hour minute and time from this current time date object and to do that we will create some variables so let hour and then we will fetch the hour so current time dot get hour so this is the method this is the method that we can use to get the current hour from the current time object okay and now to get the current minute from this current time object we will use the get minutes and to get the second from this current time object we will use the get seconds method okay so let's just create a new variable called minute and inside of this minute we will store the current minute and we can get the current minute using the current time dot get minutes and then we will create a new variable called second which will hold the second value so current time dot get seconds okay so this is the get hour method which will give us the current hour and this is the get minute method which will give us the current minute and this is the get seconds method which will give us the current second now we have all the values that we need now what we want to do is we want to update the value over here and we know that in order to access the HTML we can use the document dot get element by ID so let's just get these three ID and update the value so let me go to the JS editor and I will say document dot get element by ID and I will get the ID of hour so R and then I will fetch the inner HTML so inner HTML and then I will set the value to hour okay and then I will do the same with the minute and the second now let us copy this get element dot ID code and paste it to time okay and then I will change the ID to minute over here so minute and then I will change the value to minute so minute like that and then I will change this to the second from here so let me just copy it and then I will paste it over here and then I will also change the value to second okay now all we need to do is to call the function 
so I will go down here and I will call the update time function like that and boom the time is displaying so let's just delete this dummy value first and then we will fix some problem here so let me just delete it like that and then delete this one and delete this dummy value and now you can see that the date is not updating automatically okay and there is a problem there is no column here and there is no column here and this 5 should be like 0 5 okay so we will fix this issue just right now and we will fix this issue one by one first up we will get the column here so I will go to this line and then I will add the column here so add a column over here and then I will go to the minute and I will add the column so let me just add the column and the column there and it should be okay so we have the column now we want to fix this problem so this 4 should be like 0 4 okay so what we need to do is we need to use some if conditional so we will use the if conditional and we will check if the minute is less than 10 and if the minute is less than 10 then we will add 0 in the beginning so let's just go to this function here and then we will check if hour is less than 10 then add the 0 so hour will be 0 plus hour so if the hour will be 5 then it will add 0 at the beginning so it will become 0 5 and we need to do the same with the minute and the second so I will do that quickly so if a minute is less than 10 so if minute is less than 10 then we will add 0 at the beginning so 0 plus minutes 0 plus minute like that okay and I forgot to use the double quotation here now it's fine and you will see the result so now it is behaving correctly but we also need to get this done for this second here so I will go to the JS editor and I will check for the second so if second is less than 10 then add 0 at the beginning so second is equal to 0 plus second now it is looking good but there is one problem that remains it is not updating automatically a clock should update automatically not just when we refresh it so to update this text automatically we need to execute this function every second and we can execute our update time function by using the set interval function that is inbuilt in JavaScript so what I will do is I will call the set interval function here so set interval and this function is executed every second so I will put in the update time function here and then I will comment this out so let me just comment it out and now you can see that our clock is updating automatically so what this set interval function does is that it runs the function passed in every second and if you want to change that interval of one second to half a second then you can place a comma here and then you can pass a second parameter then you can say 500 and this 500 will stand for 500 millisecond which is just half a second and if you want to update this clock every 3 seconds then you can say uh, 3000 because 1 second is equal to 1000 milliseconds so if you want to update this clock every 3 seconds then you can pass in the 3000 as the second parameter but I want to update this every second so I will just delete this and 1 second is a default here so we don't need to pass any parameter okay so this is our clock application and it is working just fine everything is behaving perfectly we have our column here and instead of 5 it says 0 5 so now our application is complete 
So now let me just recap the entire JS code. So we have a function called update time and inside of this update time we are creating a new JavaScript date object which is called current time and this current time holds the current date and time okay and in here we are fetching the hour from this current time object and on this line we are fetching the minute and on this line we are fetching the second from this current time object and in this fls condition we are checking that if the value of hour is less than 10 so if it is 7 am then please add 0 to the beginning so instead of printing 7 it will print 0 7 which is more appropriate as you can see here instead of printing 6 or 7 it is printing 0 8 and that is why we are doing this and in here we are actually displaying the data we are getting the id and we are setting the value to all the values that we have fetched over here and on line number 24 we are executing our update time function every second using the set interval built in function alright that's going to be it for this class if you have any questions or comments then make sure to ask me in the discussion section below and if you have any suggestion for the future topic then also let me know in the discussion section below alright that's it for today's class and I will see you in the next one bye